Hello my pixies and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're coming back, thank you for coming back. If you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Pixie Pip and I make all sorts of videos involving Bloxburg and some other games once in a while such as role plays and all different things like that. So if you are new, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of my content. But anyways, today we are going to be going over some tips and tricks to build better in Bloxburg. I made a video like this a while back, but I figured it was about time I redid it because that was a long time ago and I build a lot more things now than I used to and I'm a lot more experienced. I'm not, you know, great at building. I would say that I'm pretty good though. I decent. Um, there's still a lot of things I have to learn, but I got a lot of comments on videos saying, oh, can you do a video like this um, to help me get better at building or just comments in general like that. So hopefully this helps you guys out a lot. And yeah, let's just jump right into the video and make sure to enjoy. Okay, so my first tip is to not make your house boxy. So if you don't know what I mean, I see a lot of people just making square houses. Now, it can work and you can kind of make it look good, but it definitely does not have that realism aspect that you get when you make a more dimensional house. As you can see, I did the first example just a regular square, and then the second example, I added a little divot just in the front of it. And this might not seem like a lot, but it really, really helps and you can put your door on like one of the sides. You can make a little overhang. It really, really helps. I'm just giving you guys another example on the other one, but it really makes your house look more realistic and gives it some dimension instead of just having that, you know, boxy look to it. <laughs> Tip number two is to not make your houses too big. Now by this, I mean lots of people make huge spaces for their house. Now I get that you wanna have a bigger house, but you do have to add some type of box and this goes along with making your house have shape to it. If you're just making a huge box for your main living areas, your house is just gonna look super empty and there's not gonna be enough stuff to spill fill this space. Now, even with my bigger houses, I try to make them smaller than you would really think that you would need them to be because if you make them too big, it's really, really, really hard to make them look good and to fill up the space. Even some of my recent builds, the spaces are just too big. So just don't make your rooms too big. Tip number three is to use the undo and redo buttons because it really, really helps. And honestly, I feel like people don't do this, but you really should make this part of your building habits. Now, as you can see here, I just deleted some of the other things I had on my plot. Now, instead of using the delete button because it wastes your money, it literally just wastes your money. If you go over to the side, I accidentally cut it out, but there's two undo buttons, the redo button and the undo button. So as you can see, there's if you hit the undo button, it will re-put everything you've done back onto your plot and it will just backtrack your money. And if you didn't know when you delete stuff, you don't get all of your money back. So if you just use the undo buttons, it will save you a lot of money and a lot of time. Tip number four is to change your grid size. Now, I feel like people don't know about this too. For some reason, on the side of your screen, you have three different grid sizes. You have the large, the medium, and the small. Now, as you can see, with the small, you can place stuff a lot closer together and a lot more precisely. As you can see, these windows are practically touching together. But if you switch it to a large grid, you will have them spaced out more. As you can see, you can't put them as close together. Now, this is just like having advanced placement, but not exactly. So people are like, oh, I can't do that. I don't have advanced placement, even though you can do this without advanced placement. So it's kind of confusing, but yes, use a grid size and change it. It will help you put stuff a lot better. Tip 
Tip number five is literally so important, and this is to use pillar and wall trim. Now, Bloxburg added this, and thank the Lord they did, because this makes houses so much more realistic, and if your walls look empty, I'm telling you, add some wall trim, add some floorboards, and boom, your house is not empty anymore. And adding pillars adds dimension, and it really, really helps your build become way more realistic and way more detailed. Even just adding little things, it doesn't even take that long to do, but it, I, it seriously just makes your builds look so much better. It's the simplest things I'm telling you that makes these look better, and you can play with colors and textures of them, and I really, love using wall trim now i just think it's the best thing ever and i use it in all my builds so yes i would definitely recommend using wall trim and pillars a hundred percent tip number six is to create a floor plan now i didn't do this for the longest longest time and it's probably one of my biggest mistakes i've ever done in building now, for this was a kind of a bad example because this was just gonna be a bedroom. I didn't even finish this room, it was just for the video. But basically, go on Pinterest, go on Google, and Google house floor pans. If you're looking for a farmhouse, Google farmhouse floor pans, craftsman floor plans, bedroom floor plans, and this will help your build so much. If you know how you're gonna plan your build out, where you're gonna put stuff, it makes it a lot better and it looks better because you're gonna have a more flowy, smooth floor plan instead of having it choppy. And honestly, you can tell in what builds I used a floor plan for and which ones I did not. So I definitely would recommend this and this really helps you plan out your build even if you wanna use loose leaf paper and just go for it and try to figure it out. It literally will help your build so much. Okay, so tip number seven is to add different colors and textures. Now, experimenting with colors and textures can be quite intimidating. As you can see in this build, I used a lot. I used the blue wall, I used the gray wall, I used the brick, the linen. So there's lots of different things you can do. You wanna come up with the main color scheme, obviously, for your build. If you wanna do pastel, neutral, modern, you know, there's all different things you can do, but I really just think that adding different textures can really make your build more realistic, but you don't wanna to add too many where it's overwhelming. So tip number eight is using warm lighting. I can literally not stress this enough. So as you can see in the first clip, I'm using, I just turned off the fireplace. I'm using warm lighting in my house and I'll show you what it looks like with white lighting. Um, it's not the most pleasant thing. This makes your house so much more cozy and not so blinding to the eyes. So this is the house with the white lighting. As you can see, it's not as pleasant to the eyes and it hurts to look at. So please don't use white lighting, use warm lighting. Use linen or hurricane gray or even medium stone gray is okay, but not white, please, please. Tip number nine is to use shift or control quick paint. So if you know, it takes forever to paint stuff. And this is just a kind of a bad example, but walls is an example. I guess it's not a bad example. I'm thinking like books that you have to like individually pick all the colors for. It just takes forever to do. And especially if you're doing a large build, it just gets super annoying to have to find the color, click on it and just make sure it goes well, you know? So what you can do is on PC, you can hold down control shift and then you just click the color you want and then click the wall. So you do the first one and then you just hold it down and you click the wall. So. You can hold down control shift and then click the walls and you can see how much faster it paints them. And even if you're on mobile, you can do this. Um, you can't do the shift control one, I don't think, but you can click on it and change the color. As you can see, I'm doing here. You can change the color for your example one and then for the next ones, you just click on it and then click that one and hit the check mark. And it works pretty fast, but it's a lot faster than just individually doing all of them. Okay, so my last tip and tip number 10 is to use a stamp tool. And this is also super helpful. It's like the paint, but like different. So this is like to stamp walls, to use the books, like once again, stuff like that. Stuff you've already colored, you need to make lots of. It just works so much better. Yeah, sorry. Anywho, yes, that is what I think you should do is using the stamp tool and it just, it just works a lot better it's so much easier great for plants when you have like a ton of trees you want to stamp or like things you've colored that you want to stamp like fall trees or whatever so yeah 
Okay guys, so that's the end of this video and I didn't really have an exit thing so this is just a video of my fall home. But another tip, this is just a throw in, but is to fill the space. Don't leave empty space, decorate, color everything. As you can see, I added a little chair. Was it necessary? No. Does it fill up the space to make the house look more realistic? Yes. The mantle on the fireplace is filled, you know, stuff like that. But anyways, guys, I'm getting off topic. I love you all so, so much. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new, subscribe. Please help my channel out. Um, I've been working really hard to get good with my YouTube, and it's paying off. So thank you guys so, so much for everything. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. And don't forget to hashtag spread kindness. Bye-bye. Au revoir.